Every speed that you have rescued me Sing it out, Jesus is alive Empty cross, empty grave Love eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive Oh, happy day, happy day You wash 
excited about the Lord? How many are excited about the Lord? The Lord will do wonders in the midst of us. Amen? You know, I've been uh, going through a series uh, from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, and there are 50, message, 50 chapters in Genesis, but uh, I'll go little by little, and every um, chapter I will share three messages uh, that will really help you to understand what Genesis spoke about. Genesis in the, is a book of a great beginning. Everything that God created, everything that God wanted to speak in the book of Revelation was told in the book of Genesis. So every creation of man was started in the book of Genesis. Before I continue, why not all the kids club children go down so that, you know, you can uh, go through your lessons. All right, thank you. All right, just go down. The parents come back up again. Send your children and let them all learn something from the Lord. Amen. All right, the rest of you, I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. To verse 9. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 9. You got it? So I'm going to share the first portion and I pray that you know this message will minister to you and every message that you hear must bring transformation. It's not just about happiness, it's about bringing back holiness and righteousness into your life. You know, today we have many, many places you go, they talk about how to be happy. We must be happy. But they fail to minister to us about holiness and righteousness. I think if you want to experience God, if you want to know God more, you must have holiness and righteousness. Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 1, chapter 18, verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham near a great tree of memory while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Verse 1. Verse 2. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bow low to the ground. Verse 3. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Verse 4, let a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Verse 5, let me get something to eat. So you can refresh and then you can go your way. Now, that you may have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. Verse 6. So Abraham hurried into the tent of Sarah. Quick, he said. Get three sashes of fine flour and kindle it and bake some bread. Verse 7. Then he ran to his herds and selected a choice of tender calf and gave it to the servants. 
so who hurried to prepare it. Verse 8. He then brought some curd and milk and a calf that has been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Verse 9. Then they asked, Where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. He says, There in the tent, he said. There in the tent, he says. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, tonight we ask for a, a fresh move of your anointing. Lord, in Jesus' name, we want to understand what is written in these nine scriptures so that, Lord, we can be prepared as an instrument unto you. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless your word, bless me, and bless the hearers of your word. That we will not just be hearers, but we will be doers of your word. Lord, come, bring transformation in us and minister to us. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen. I want you to look at uh, Genesis 18, verse 1 to verse 9. There are three messages I'm going to preach, but I'm going to preach one today. And uh, there are three points that I'm going to give. In these three points, you will see what is written in these nine words that can bring transformation into your life and into my life. Every word that has been written must impact your life. You know, they must bring some changes into your life. It must bring you closer to God. Not to man, but closer to God. Here he says, the Lord, verse 1, the Lord appeared to Abraham. The Lord, I want you to see, there were three persons who appeared while Abraham was in the tent. Three of them. One person was the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the two angels. If you were to do a word study to see the word the Lord appeared, it's not just an angel, it spoke about the Lord himself. The Lord himself. And he says strongly, is God who visited Abraham. I want you to know God can visit you anytime, any day, and at any moment of your life. But when God visited you at any time, any moment of your life, there must come a, a transformation. There must come a touch. You must be aware of the presence and the power of God that God is doing something in your life. Amen? So now, the Lord appeared to Abraham while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent at the heat of the day. I want you to know the heat of the day is not in the morning. It should be about the afternoon time. So it was so hot, you know. We, all, we have heard many times in the book of Genesis, the Lord appeared to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. We all want God to visit us in the cool of the day. But sometimes you, you do not know God will visit you noontime or midnight while you are sleeping. He says, you wake you up. He says, you listen, I got a message for you. But I want you to know when God appears to you, you must be sensitive. You must know it's God who's coming to visit you. So here, the Lord appeared to Abraham and, and while he was sitting at the tent at the heat of the day. You know, nobody wants to have visitors at the, at the sticky day. It's very hot. Nobody wants any kind of visitor. If you have visitors, so you'll try to bring them to a cool place. Now, Abraham brought these visitors under a tree so that there is some shade. Verse 2, then Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. Three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried to the entrance of the tent to meet them and bow low. I want you to see Abraham bow low. I want you to know there was an adoration and there was worship that Abraham gave because Abraham recognized it was not the angel but God himself. All worship must be given to God, not to the angels. All worship must be given to God and God alone. You can't worship the angels. It was God who came and appeared. And Abraham recognized that and he bowed low down to the ground. It was a prostrate bow. It was a prostrate 
flow before God. It talks about an honor. It talks about a, a the heart most worship to God. It talks about a reverend unto God. He bowed down before and he acknowledged he is a supreme one. The one who sits on the throne is God himself. And that is the kind of worship that we need to give today to the Lord. If we are going to meet up with the Lord, I, I'm not going to, I, I don't want you to know that you are going to sit down in the chair and put your leg across and you talk to God. It's not like that. You will see the awesome presence of God. I believe when Abraham saw God, there was an awesome presence of God and he recognized it was not angels, but it was God himself. So my friends, as you begin to encounter God, you must also acknowledge the reverence and the fear that must come into you. All right, verse 3, he says, If I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servants by. Here he, he recognized he was not just God. Abraham says, I am your servant. He says, I'm your servant. He recognized God was supreme. And he was created as a servant of God to do service unto the Lord. Right from the beginning, the book of Genesis chapter 12, you know, God called Abraham. He says, I'm going to send you to the promised land and you and your family will be blessed and you will see the goodness and the greatness of the Lord. God promised him with a mandate. God promised him with the, with the word that God will bless him. How many believe that God has spoken to you some or other way in the years past that he will bless you and he will make you great. So God spoke to Abraham and he said he will make him great. And then we found that, you know, these are not normal people. He says, he says, if I have found favor in your eyes, if I have found favor in your eyes, you know, when we stand before the Lord, we must always find favor in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of men. In the eyes of God. So he says, oh God, if I found favor in the eyes of you, I want to do something. I want to do something. He says, let me bring some water that you may wash your feet and rest under this tree. And then he says, let me also prepare something for you to eat so that you can refresh yourself and then you can go your way to whatever you want to do. I want you to see this whole chapter of Genesis 18 is not just a visitation of God to Abraham's life, but he came with a purpose. He passed by Abraham's tent and he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah because he saw the stench of sin that was coming before the throne of God. And God says, I want to personally visit before something could take place in Sodom and Gomorrah. God not only recognized righteousness, God also recognized there was sin in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the purpose of God coming to visit Abraham and then to pass by to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God was telling, I'm not just coming to give a message that by next year, this time, Sarah will give birth to a boy. But much more than that, he says, shall I hide a secret from my friend Abraham? I want you to know Abraham was not just a servant, but he was also a friend of God. Amen? He was also a friend of God. So whatever we are going to do, we must also always recognize that we are not just serving God, we must become a friend of God so the friend will share much more uh, uh, secret things that that you and I can talk about. Amen? And he says, Shall I prepare some food and refresh you so that you can go your way now? And he says, uh, and he says, Very well, they answered, Do as you say. You know, when you promise God, God will not just say, you know, if, if you can't do, it's okay. If you promise, do as you say. That's what God will say. Do what as you promise. So Abraham hurried to the tent of Sarah. He says, quick. He says, get three 
jar of flour, fine flour, and made some bread. Baked some bread. All right. Then he hurried and selected a tender calf. I want you to know he did not select uh, the defeated calf. The best. I want you to know when you serve the Lord, you must serve the best. Only a few people acknowledge. When you serve the Lord, you must serve your best. When you give to the Lord, you don't give all those, uh, the calf that is wounded, broken, and dragging. You know, they don't serve. They will inspect the calf or the lamb before you serve to the Lord. So Abraham selected from all among the animals, he selected the best calf. And he says, I want to give to the Lord so that I know I'm giving the best to God. And then he says in verse, verse 7, I want you to underline this. He ran. The Bible says he ran. How old was Abraham when he received this? He was 100 years old. Now people 45 years old, self, they cannot stand too long. But here Abraham was 100 years old and he ran quickly to do whatever he need to do unto the Lord. Amen. I want to share with you three important points uh, about uh, what God was doing in the message with Abraham. You know, in, 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 the, in our life, we have different talents, different gifting, different calls. And in the different gifting, calls, and talents, sometimes we, we interchange by using different, different gifts and talents. Isn't that true? That means, let me just put, we are a man with many hats. We are a man with many hats. You know, when, when, we, when we change our hats, we are doing something to feed something that will suit to, to accomplish certain things. Isn't that true? You can be someone, but when you change your hat, you are trying to suit to the situation so that it will not look very awkward, but it will look pleasant. So everyone has got that kind of uh, gifting talents that we can interchange. But here, Abraham had three different qualities in his life that he had two, three different hands to use and he present himself before the Lord. And we are going to see the three sides of the life of Abraham. Here's a glimpse of we are going to look at one today and uh, we see what the Lord will do in the, in the life of Abraham. If you look at the, uh, the, the, the passage uh, Genesis 18 verse 1 to verse 19, you will see the first thing, a ministry of a servant. Write down this, a ministry of a servant. A ministry of a servant. So here, Abraham say, I am your servant. And he said to the Lord, here in 18, chapter, Genesis chapter 18, we need to learn how Abraham began to narrate himself or project himself and put himself, and he says, I'm a servant. The first thing here you see, Abraham identified visitors. As a servant, he identified visitors. One of them was the Lord himself and the two other angels. And he recognized these are not normal human beings that is passing by. He knows the people who pass by, you know, all those people from the different state or different town pass by the tent. They know these are pirates, these are good people, these are my neighbors. But here he recognized they are heavenly hosts. Two different things. That's why every born again believer, you must have the spirit of discernment. Here Abraham had a spirit of discernment and he says, I know I recognize these are not normal human beings. These are heavenly hosts. And then what he did, he sprang into action to serve them. How many today, you said you are a servant of God, you can also do the same likewise like Abraham. You spring into action to serve whatever the Lord wants you to do. That's why it's important for us to understand you will never know when the Lord will show up in your house or in your life. You'll never know. Sometimes some people I know God would have visited 
you, but you did not recognize. Maybe when God visited you, it looked like me, and you say, oh, this pastor is okay. But it could be God himself. All right? So many people miss this thing. And because we are so familiar with people, and we do not know it is God who has visited. But here Abraham, he was a servant. He recognized it was God. All right? So the second thing that we, we need to understand as, as a minister, ministry of a servant, Abraham had a servant heart. Servant heart. Come on, say to somebody, Abraham had a servant heart. Come on, turn to the right and to the left. I know there is a gap. Turn to somebody and say, Abraham had a servant heart. Because why Abraham had a servant heart? When he saw the host of angels, he ran to them and he says, I want to minister to you. I will be your servant and I want to serve you the best that I could. What is God telling us today? He's telling us, if you want to serve the Lord, you and I must also have a servant heart. Come on, say, next, I must have a servant heart. Come on, turn to somebody and say, you must have a servant heart. No, you are not talking. Come on, talk to somebody. I must have a servant heart. Come on, turn to somebody on your right or to the left and say, you must have a servant heart. You see, in order to serve the Lord, we must have a servant heart. A heart for God. A heart to serve people. You know, whatever we are going to do in the church, you know, we are not just serving God, we are serving people. People are important. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? We are serving people. So our purpose to serve the Lord is to serve people of God and we are serving the Lord. Now, let's see three areas of Abraham's life that how he served the Lord. Number one, write down this. Verse 1 to verse 6. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 6. The quickness of his ministry. He was quick to do his ministry. Write down this. Quickness of his ministry. He was quick in doing things. He didn't say, oh, it's okay, these are the hosts of angels. You know, they can linger around and let me know, you know, I will serve them in the evening when it's cool. He never said that. He was quick. Come on, say he was quick. Abraham spring into action. How old is Abraham? He was 100 years old. He spring forth into action. And this is what God is telling the church if you want to be a servant of God, if you want to have a servant heart, if you have a heart for the kingdom of God, you must be quick to do his ministry. Quick, quickness of his ministry. The Bible says Abraham spring into action, speedily trying to supply every needs for the heavenly host. He was quick to do. And he says, I want to meet. I want to do something for this heavenly host. Before they pass me by. Before they pass on to the next place. I want to do something to please this heavenly host. So that I know I've done my portion. You know, everyone here, when you do service unto the Lord. You must know that you're serving. And you must finish your portion. Before God could give the next task into your life. He may be 100 years old. But he did not delay. There was no hesitation in his life. He flee from one task to the next until he complete. First thing he ran to Sarah, his wife, and said, Quickly, I want you to make some bread. Bake some bread. And then he ran and picked the choice calf from his farm. And then he runs back to the servant. He says, this is a choice calf that I picked among that and I want you to prepare a good meal. He ran from one task to another, from one job to another. And he was quick, even though he is 100 years old. 
My friend, if you said, I want to be a servant, you know, you should not have hesitation. You should not delay. There must be joy. There must be a heart of willingness. A servant heart is a heart that you must prepare to have the willingness and, and you must go an extra mile to do something for the kingdom of God. And that is what God was talking about in the life of Abraham. He says, there was quickness in his ministry. Whatever you are going to do, you said, I want to serve the Lord. You must have quickness. And because every time, every move is a new season. And when the new season comes, when you delay, you have to wait for the next season to take place in your life. God was preparing. He says, Abraham was quick. So if you want to be a servant of the Lord, you must be quick, quick from finishing one task to another so that you can say, Lord, I've finished what you have called me to do. I'm waiting for the next assignment or the next job or the next move for me to do something to please the Lord. Whatever we are going to do is not to please man, but to please the Lord. Come on, turn to somebody and say, I want to be a servant. I want to please God. Say, I want to please God. It's not pleasing man, but pleasing God. So, Abraham did that. Abraham not only recognized his duty, he not only just recognized his duty. You know, we all have duties in the house of God, in the church, in the ministry. You got also duties to worship the Lord, read the word of God, and you also got duty to pray. Yes or no? Uh, whether, whether you're doing in church or you're doing by yourself, there are certain duties as a Christian, as a servant, that you need to do. When you're born into the kingdom of God, God says you're a servant of God. If you were to read in the book of Matthew, right until the book of John, the four gospels, <clears throat> when you're born into the kingdom of God, God says, I'm going to make you a servant. You read that carefully. So you are not just called as a believer, you're called as a servant. So there is a servanthood, a servant spirit. You know, a servanthood, servant spirit, a servant life that you must portray before you have the servant heart to do things. So God was preparing Abraham. Not only you have a servant heart, a servant spirit, a servant language, but you must also have a servant heart to do things for what God has called you to do. So church, we, as God began to prepare us, let's prepare and say to the Lord, as what is written in the book of uh, the New Testament, the four gospel, God, when you become a born again individual believer, God says, I'm making you a servant unto the kingdom of God. He's making you as a servant to the kingdom of God. So when you are seated here, I want you to know you are not one individual who is just believing. You are a servant of God, serving the kingdom of God. And there is duties and responsibilities. Duties and responsibilities. So what is your duty in the kingdom of God? What is your responsibility in the kingdom of God? As you say you are a servant of God, we must do something. Don't just say, you know, when things pass by, when the, it's, it's all too late and gone, you say, I finished my race. It's not just finishing the race, my friend. There are duties and responsibility that you and I must accomplish before God take us. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? All right, now. Here you see Abraham. He was quick to do his ministry. He was quick. There was quickness in doing his ministry. He never delayed. And he asked the heavenly host, can I? Don't pass by. Don't pass. Don't pass me by. And he says, I'm your servant. Don't pass me by. He says, I'm your servant. Don't pass me by. And he says, before you go, you know, I want to find favor in your eyes. You see, everything that we do, you know, we can do whatever, but we must find favor in the eyes of God. Favor in the eyes of God. Amen. So first thing I want you to write down from verse 1 to verse 6, there was quickness of his ministry. Then I want you to see in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work it with all of your heart as working unto the Lord, not for human master. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. All right. <clears throat> I'm reading from NIV and he's in King James Version here. And it says, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. Whatever you do, you do it fervently. Whatever you do, you do it heartily, you know, joyfully. And it says, let me just read in NIV. Whatever you do, work it with all of your heart. Do it with all of your heart. Whatever you do, do it with all of your heart. As working unto the Lord. It's not unto man, working unto the Lord. Whatever you do here, I want you to know, you are not just doing for man, but you are doing for the Lord. Amen? Come on, say, say to someone here, you know, please read Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Now everybody is quiet. Come on, read to somebody. Tell them, you know, please read Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Now, let us go a little more deeper and say in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 6. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eyes is on you, but as a slave of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Another translation says, not with eye service or men pleasers. You know, there's so many people today, everywhere I go, I see people do with eye service. When Pastor Ketek is around, you know, they will, they will behave well. When Pastor Ketek is not around, they throw everything around. Eye service. Men pleasers. You see, this one. We are not doing, if you want to be a servant of God, don't be like what you see. An eye service or man pleases. Now God is not well pleased with that. You are not serving men. You are not serving anybody. You are serving the Lord. You are serving the Lord. Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your spirit. You are a servant with a servant heart. God is saying, I want to see a servant heart as you grow in the Lord. Not only just grow in the Lord, when you grow matured, every year you have a new age and new days. And I want you to know you must grow in the Lord and you must become a better servant, a good servant, a glorified servant of the Lord. So God will say, you are well done. Whatever you do, it's worth doing for the Lord. And it's worth doing it right. Whatever you do, you're doing it unto the Lord, but do it right. Can we do that? Do it right. Do it right. No, it's no use for us to have boastfulness, pride, and things like that. Show off. All these are not worth at all because we must see, uh, finally people see, I see Christ in you. I see Christ in you. I see, I see God in you. That's what people want to see. A transformed life. A transformed life. You know, the, the three, in, three visitors who came to Abraham, finally, when they see Abraham, not only they say, you are my friend, they saw what he had a servant heart. He had a servant heart. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I want you to see 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13, as you begin to serve the Lord, I want you to know everybody will go through temptation. But what he says, no temptation has overtaken you except is common to mankind. And God is faithful. I say God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also will provide a way out so that you can endure it. You can overcome it. You can escape. One translation say you overcome. One translation say you, you will escape. Another translation say you will endure. I say God will make a way. 
I say God will make a way. When there is temptation, where things go, begin to go wrong in your life, I want you to know God is in your side. When God is in your side, He will fight for you. You'll become an overcomer. You'll become a victorious person because, you know, no temptation is big. But God will make a way for you to escape from the temptation so that you can live a life that is righteous and holy unto the Lord so that you can have a servant heart, a heart for the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, let's go to the second point. Quality of His ministry. Quality of his ministry. Genesis chapter 18, verse 7 and 8. Not only he was swift in his service to the Lord, but he was also sacrificial in the service of the Lord. Not only swift, not only fast, but he was sacrificial. He says, I will choose the best calf and he sacrifice it and give it to the Lord. All right, quality of his ministry. And when I say quality of the ministry, you know, whatever we are going to do, there must be quality. Whatever we do, there must be quality. You know, he doesn't just chin chain. He, he doesn't do shortcut. He doesn't just say, ah, yeah, nobody see. Pastor Marcus is not here. Andrew is not here. Let's just do whatever we like. No. He says, I must be precise because whatever I serve, there must be quality. Whatever you do, let's do with quality. Amen? You know, whatever you're serving God, let there be quality. Whatever you're going to do in the kingdom of God, let there be quality. So that, you know, when God looks at it, He's not just going to accept it. He says, I see a value and a quality and a sacrificial life that was given and put into whatever you do. And God says, I know, I accept it because there is a sacrificial that you have done. A sacrificing life, a sacrificing uh, token that was given so that God recognized that there must be a sacrificial, a quality of ministry. You know, when you say, I want to be a servant, there must be a cause. And there must be personality. There must be a cause. I want you to know, when I begin to serve the Lord, I have to pay my cause. If I want to do something outside in the world, I think I'll be very successful. Even Pastor Marcus, because he was also an engineer. But, you know, he sacrificed that. He says, I want to leave a cause for the kingdom of God. There is a cause and there is a personality that we must give unto the Lord to become a servant of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Here he says, he went to his farm and personally selected, killed and prepared calf for a meal. He selected. He didn't just choose something that is running with wounded or one leg or three leg but he chose something that was perfect. Perfect. Whatever sacrifice you're going to give unto the Lord, in the Old Testament, the priests will check. The priests will check the animal before they slaughter. But I want you to know the same thing when Jesus was, before he went to be crucified. You know, the high priests began to check Jesus and they found him no guilt, no condemnation, no fault. And he says, he is a lamb that is without fault of blemish and they sacrifice him. Church, I want you to know when you want to do something for the Lord, you must do something with quality and because it's a ministry and we must give the best to the Lord because God is looking the best out of your heart. He's asking the best out of your heart. Be willing to sacrifice for the master is a sign that you possess a servant heart. Willing to sacrifice for your master is a sign that you possess a servant heart. A servant heart. I want you to put this into your spirit. When in service time, tithes, talents, you're willing to render the requests of the master for his glory. 
The greatest sacrifice you can offer, of course, is written in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you, my brethren, by the mercies of God, present your body as a living sacrifice. I want you to look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. By the mercies of God, I beseech you, my brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable, what? Service. I want you to know, my friends, all the young ones, be watchful of your life. You know, today we look at so many things, your eye gate, your mouth gate, your ear gate. It is all open to all kinds of things outside the world. And don't pollute your life. But I know technology today is important. But don't give yourself to the technology and be lost in the technology. And I want you to know, you will lose what God wants to speak to you in a different manner. That's why I said, you know, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, let me just read in a... In a, in a and I will worship. Therefore, I urge you, my brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is true and proper worship. It says true and proper worship. So can, can all of you, young, old, everybody, you know, we must guard our body, keep our body holy and pure. And he says, I want to give this to the Lord. And he, this, whatever I'm going to do unto the Lord, there must be truth and proper worship unto the Lord. Third point, quietness of his ministry. Quietness of his ministry. Verse 8. I want you to look at verse 8. Quietness of his ministry. While his visitors were eating the meal, Abraham stood quietly to serve them. You know, he was standing as a servant. I want you to know he is, he is standing as a servant. And the, the heavenly host was taking a meal. He was standing as a servant and he was looking. Look at verse 8 and see. He stood by and he served them. He did not sit with them and he was standing there and he became a servant. I want you to see a portrait of Abraham himself as a servant. He says, Master, you do. I'm your servant. I'm your servant. He simply stood beside them, adopting a pose of a servant, listening to the voice of the Lord, adopting the pose of a servant, and listening to the voice of the Lord. I think something very important we all must learn. We all must learn. Just imagine Abraham's servant as they watch him from afar. Just imagine Abraham's servant watching him from far. You know, I am a servant for Abraham. But here, Abraham become a servant. He stood like a servant to serve the master. That portrayed itself a humble uh, spirit that he had. He had a servant spirit, a humble spirit, and uh, he had a servanthood inside him. He says, I'm serving the master and I am the servant. There was quietness in his ministry. Real servant of God are those individuals who make up themselves available to the work of the Lord in any task. In any task. But I believe tonight, I believe tonight, God is speaking to us in these three areas. What are the first thing I told you? What is the first point I told you? Huh? The first thing I said, what is the first point? Uh huh. Quality? Okay, quietness. Okay, let me just recap a little. Number one, quietness of his ministry. Number two, what is number two? Quality of his ministry. Number three, all right. I want you to see three things very important before I close. <clears throat> number one, quickness. 
As a servant, we must be quick to do things for the Lord. All right. Number two. What is number two? Quality in the ministry. As you serve the Lord, let us have quality in serving the Lord. Number three, there must be quietness in serving the Lord. Quietness. I'm going to continue the next three uh, points next week, but the same chapter. What I want you to do is that I'm going to give you a homework. Can you go back and read chapter 18? I'm going to share something. Before the servants left, before the heavenly host left, you know, halfway, they turned back and came back to Abraham. I want you to read that and find out why they turned back and why they came back. Because there is a, a secret and there is something that God wants to speak to you. But tonight, I'm going to touch on these three areas. And as a servant of God, as a servant, as a believer of God, I want you to tell the Lord, Oh God, make me a servant that I will serve you regardless of whatever situation that I want to please you as a servant of God. Give me a servant heart. Give me a servant spirit. Give me a servant moral. Give me a servant standard that I want to serve the Lord and I want to do things to glorify God. Amen. Today is not just a message to call you to come to the altar. Where you are seated, you tell the Lord, Oh God, make me a servant. Make me humble. Make me humble. Make me an instrument before you, Lord. Make me, Lord, that the quality, the three quality that I learned from the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 9. Lord, the three important quality to become a servant. Lord, let me have that so that I can serve you better. I can serve you without any kind of reservation, without any kind of bitterness, wall, or hatred, or any kind of anger inside. You know, all this must be removed in order for us to have the servant, servant heart. Servant heart. Servant heart. So let's prepare our life. I want you to close your eyes and let's just look to the Lord and say, Lord, touch me and minister to me, O God. Almighty oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word, O God. A servant is a person that will always be in the presence of the Lord. A servant is a person who will come into the house of God to serve. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight that you will touch every individual here. Lord, we want to thank you from Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 9. You will prepare our heart, prepare our spirit man, our inner man, that we will have a quality, we will possess a heart of a servant. Gentle, calm. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, as every eyes close, every head bow, I pray today God will just stir your spirit, man. I pray God will challenge you tonight. That God will just pour your, your, the Spirit of God upon your heart and say, let it just melt, O God, Lord, that we will possess a servant heart, a quality of a servant heart. The quickness, the quality, the quietness of a servant in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray that you touch everyone that is here, Lord, that are sitting in the church and those who are watching in the YouTube or in the TV. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you just minister. Lord, I pray, oh God, there will be a quickening in every life and heart. Oh God, they will say, I'm called to be a servant and I must have a servant heart. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the miracle take place and touch your people, Lord. Lord, break every barriers, every walls before them, Lord. Father, remove, Lord, every works of the enemy. Father, Lord, let the gentle move of the Holy Spirit will compel them, will stir them, will woo them, Lord, will call them, O oh God, into the closeness of God. Father, we want to thank you today 
as we say we want to be a servant lord let there be holiness and righteousness and truth and proper worship to be installed in our life father we pray that you touch us lord those who are sick in your body i pray for a healing i pray for a miracle in the name of jesus lord i thank you and i bless you lord and i give you glory father we thank you for today bless the message and bless your people in jesus name we ask and we pray Amen. Why not give a good clap offering to the Lord?